Go. When my daughter is walking around and she is having difficulty and she looks a little bit like she, I say she looks a little bit like she's drunk, very dizzy. Um, why do you think that is? Wait. Yesterday, yesterday, after the session, she stood very well, actually, and she was very upright. And then I saw her, she started walking to, to a toy or something, and she walked perfectly fine. And then she turned around and started walking, and it appeared to me that she didn't formulate an intent for her walking. There was nothing she could hone in that she wanted to either touch or go to or anything. And at that point, she started looking around to see why she's walking. And then she started doing this funny little drunk walk around herself. The moment she has another purpose, she walks through it. So I think what happens to her, she starts walking and she doesn't have an idea of why she's doing it. And that's when she starts losing track. Now, you told me just a second ago, you tell it to, to Neil. That she does, well, she does, this at, she does this at home all the time, where she'll walk around, and we don't know. She looks like she bumps into it. We call yeah, her Bumpsy. But when you tell her? When you well, tell oh, her. when I tell her, go get your shoes, she walks straight, gets her shoes, and brings them to me. Go get your pants, she'll bring them to me. But if she's just walking around and not knowing what to do, she looks like she's she looks off. She yes. looks like she's off kilter. Yeah. Yes. And, and I was talking to Cheryl about this today, but in, oh, well, sorry, in new environments, it's even, I feel like it's, it's worse because yeah. she's got the new, new sensory that she's looking at all these things and she seems more disoriented if she doesn't have a task. Yeah. So, so what happens is, what happens, if you look at animals in nature, I think the most the obvious ones is if you look at the lions, you know, movies about lions, is they don't move until they have a purpose to move. And now we can take a walk just for the pleasure of walking or for the exercise, but we have in our mind an idea, you know, an idea, a purpose. But really, movement is associated with intent. Now, what happens uh, for her is that she starts walking, and the intent helps organize the movement. People don't understand that. The, the movement is associated with intent, with a purpose, with a, uh, trying to achieve something, get up to reach something. Get, go down to rest, uh, walk to mommy, get the pants. Now, it's so built into our action that normally we just don't realize that we're doing it. So when I watched her walk yesterday and started getting, looking like she's a little drunk, I thought, she, had, she started walking, she says, what am I walking? Where am I walking? Why am I walking? What am I trying to achieve? And, and then she started kind of stumbling. But the moment I, I don't remember what I told her to do, but the moment I told her, I told her to go to the mirror or something, then she went in a straight line. So uh, she needs to, to learn to, to build a purpose for her movement. But, but, it's, uh, but she, she knows how to, don't worry about it. When she starts walking like that, you can just either, first of all, don't get so anxious because you know she can walk and she can walk well. And then you can gently, you know, don't overdo it, but you can gently say, uh, sweetheart, you say, do you want to go somewhere? Do you maybe want to look at your teddy bear? You see, so you don't tell her, you don't try to protect her from walking a little bit like a drunken person because she's done it a million times, it's okay. But try to start building into that experience the idea of having an idea. Like the meaning. Fine, fine. Yeah, the meaning. Give her an idea. That will organize her action. Hmm. We're built to act. We're, the brain is built to organize successful action. We're not built to go through developmental stages. We're not built to accomplish something to reassure our parents and therapists. We're built to act. And that's what we're working with her. So she's doing so much more. She's standing. She's walking. She's hmm. starting to say words. Despite her very rare and severe condition, her brain is figuring out how to do it. So now that's and that's, what, and that's what we want. We want our brain to figure it out. Yeah, it we is. It, it, yeah. it is figuring it out. <laughs> Look at the changes. That's the brain figuring it out. So the same brain will keep figuring it out more and more. So it's not like she's lacking balance or she's not in good shape. She's perfect balance as long as she has an idea. <laughs> and in a new environment, it's more challenging. She also gets distracted. She mm -hmm. sees a lot of new things and she feels a little more insecure. So that always tends to regress us anyway. Okay? okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't... don't uh, rather than 
getting worried or thinking she doesn't have proper balance or she has a genetic disorder, say, she has no idea why her feet are moving forward right now. Let's give her a purpose. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. You see, and it takes away the feeling of something is terribly wrong. It gives a, 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 a feeling of an opportunity to create something better. Yeah, because I think when you see her and she's bumbling around, I'm going, oh my gosh. Well, so she she's is bumbling, bumbling, but she's bumbling around mentally. She's not bumbling around physically. You see it in the motor performance, but it's her mental performance. It's in her intellectual mm -hmm. formation. So it's a great opportunity to, to sharpen her intellectual performance in relation to her movement. Okay. Thank you.